Horseshoe Lake's a lake that I've fished on and off for years and years, ever since I was a little boy. I sort of, well, I can remember buying a, what it was called a gate key back then, out the back of Carp Talk in the for sale bit. And yeah, fished up here ever since then. Really taught me how to fish these sort of waters, and it is a great place to fish. A lovely place is 60 odd acres. Um, there's a great head of fish in here, um, you know, size wise as well. There's a couple around 40 pounds, and there's a good head of 30s as well. If you get amongst a few fish, then there is a good chance for 30 pounder. And they are stunning fish as well, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the new fish, the bigger fish that are coming through the ranks are from like DS Fisheries, and yeah, they do, they do look absolutely stunning if you can get a few. Um, it's tricky, I'd say it's a bit, you know. It's a moderate place to fish and catch fish. The fish aren't overly hard to catch, but actually tackling the venue, because you know, you've got big sort of areas of silkweed, you've got areas of gravel, you've got big sort of beds of weed. Um, so it really does teach you how to fish these sort of waters. And, but once you sort of, you know, once you know, you know, and it, it does become a lot easier. But yeah, it's, it's, just a, it's just a really nice place to come fishing. You know, you're nice and secure in the gate and there's not hundreds of people here. There's, you know, you have to be a member of the Carp Society to fish here. So once you've joined the Carp Society, then you can either buy a six month or a 12 month permit to fish here, or you can also uh, just pay as you go and, and fish it on a day ticket. Yeah, we've had a little, little go. We got in the gate, we spoke to Carl, um, who's the bailiff on site and uh, as I was chatting to him just getting the lowdown of what's been going on if there's a you know any particular swims that have been doing a few fish and that could actually see a few fish cruising around in summer bay um, but he also said there were some good pegs free around the lake so what we did is we had a quick drive up to um, just up to the headland and then had a walk down and this swim's actually free this is probably one of the you know the most popular swims on the lake it's called um, Winter Point um, and yeah to be honest if you're sort of a bit unsure where they are, it's just a great starting point. It's like center of the big bay, um, and there is always the odd fish kicking about. So yes, yeah, so it's a great starting point. So we had a look in here, made sure it was free, and then we headed over quickly down in Summer Bay and thought we'd just have a quick go whilst the sun was out, have a quick go, see if we can nick a bite off the top, and oh my life, it was horrendous. Just started getting them going, and they were feeding quite confidently to be fair, and if, well, if the birds had stayed away, then I'm pretty sure that we could have nicked a bite. I did have a chance, I had to take off the top, um, and I thought I had another chance, but it was actually a fish just sort of got a bit tangled up in the length in between the float and the bait. But, um, but yeah, they were there, but the bird life just made it nigh on impossible to, uh, you know, to, to sort of get a real chance of a fish. What it is, is there's a couple of lakes um, along this road, there's a few trout lakes and stuff, and they actually they actually shoot, you know, they have shoots on there, so they, the, the bird life actually tends to reside on this lake a little bit more, um, just because they know they're a little bit safer. Um, so yeah, so we've been that off, and you know, it's coming into the evening now, so we're gonna have a look. Um, obviously, Horseshoe is a gravel pit, it's quite weedy, so we didn't wanna leave it too late, because I can see at, like around on the surface there's actually some patches of weed and bits and pieces floating about, there's a few rafts of weed floating, so, finding a spot to fish on for the night might take a little bit more time than, you know, that if you're fishing other lakes. So I don't want to be rushing, sort of coming on darkness, trying to find a spot or anything like that. So we're now going to get set up in this swim, um, go about getting some bait out, getting some rigs out, and then obviously me and the Moz, unfortunately for me, I've got to spend the next 48 hours with him. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to get the barbecue on and have a cold cider. One of the sort of like the main things of fishing this lake is going to be looking for somewhere to actually fish on. Um, you know, especially like to do what, well, what I like doing is bait fishing. Um, so I'm going to be looking for like the clearest area that I can possibly find. Um, but I'm really going to take my time. I'm going to have a look. I've got braided main line, obviously a heavy lead. I'm going to plumb up. Um, I'm not using uh, like a grappling or gripper lead for this, not at this minute, because if you do 
put that on to start with and you chuck it in a great big weed bed you're going to end up either leaving line in the weed bed or you might you know you might not be able to get the lead back out um, because some of the rafts of weed are quite savage so i'm just going to start with a lead and then when i plumb around and find what i think is a clearer area or lighter weed and then once we establish how clean the spot is we can sort of sort out how much bait we're going to use um, because i generally feel like sort of like the the lesser clean the spot is the more bait that you want i know that kind of sounds silly but you sort of kind of want to use as much bait as you can to like pat the weed down a bit and create like a really nice attractive area on top of the weed however if it is like a you know like a living room table then you won't need as much bait to sort of create an effect because you've got a nice clean area to fish on you can bait nice and accurately and uh, you know you're fishing straight away and then we can look at exactly how we're going to fish over the top of that spot once we found one yeah so straight away that is literally like the first cast that we've had with that lead and uh, yeah it's like chucking it on the m5 so what i'll do is have a little plum either side have a little plum either side just to see just to see how far left and right you know the spot is but yeah that was, that was quite promising it's always nice you know it's nice they are weedy you know weedy lakes like this um and don't get me wrong, the carp absolutely love the weed. And like this is going to be, this is going to be a great spot because you've got a, you know, you've got a really nice hard clear area just to the left of a great big massive weed bed. It's like probably, you know, out of all of this bay, there's a big weed bed on the top, almost in the middle of the lake. So it just screams carp. So like, isn't you know, there's no reason why you wouldn't want to fish it. So um, yeah, finished plumbing up now basically. Um, got the one spot at the main front of the swim, which is like 90 odd rod lengths. Uh, probably gonna start with two rods there because it's, you know, it's a really nice spot. Um, perfect, you could fit three rods on there if you wanted to, easy, no problem. Uh, yeah, but I'm gonna start with two out there and because the swim over the other side there has done, done a couple of bites in the last few days, what I'm gonna do is, I've, well, I've had a plumb over there and it's a little bit shorter than I'd liked, but at um, 16 rod lengths, there's a smaller spot. It's not gravel like the spot out there. It's just a nice smooth area. Either side of it's a bit silk weed, but you can tell where people are just, you know, they must have just been fishing out that way that it is a bit clearer. So yeah, so I've clipped my rods up ready, uh, put elastic markers on there as well, just so I know, just in case. Um, this is basically because there's lots of floating weed about um, and also, it just saves having to sort of wrap it around the sticks all the time. I've got the, you know, I've got the elastic marker on the line now, so I can just clip it up on the spool every time without having to, you know, to rewrap it, especially if I get wiped out by a weed bed or, you know, or we catch a fish or for whatever reason. So it's just going to save a bit of time faffing about with the sticks. But yeah, they're all clipped up to the spots. I've got this rod here, just on a little reverse combi link, and I've got a, a little bug white pop-up on there, a little 12 miller. I've gone for white just I think it'll stand out over the bottom a little bit on there I feel like that that's a little bit silty um, even though it's really clear um, yeah I just think with a darker lake bed I think that a little white pop up there would be would be the one on that um, and also if it does land on a bit of like a bit of choddy sort of bottom bit of silk weed or anything with a supple boom it'll still be able to sit down nice and you'll always be fishing um, and then these two rods 
I've just got on PB pop-ups. Again, 12 mil, they work perfect for the size of the hook they want. You know, just got a little size six. Um, illusion hook lengths, just because, you know, that's nice and supple. Um, and we are fishing the hook closer to the bottom on that. Um, and yeah, because it's obviously gravel, you can fish with a hook almost, you can fish it with the hook flat on the floor if you wanted to. Um, it's not gonna get fouled on any weed or anything like that. Um, I've just chose to sit it up a little bit just to, uh, just to sit it up, just because that's the way I like to fish them. But the, um, the color, I mean, yellow, yellow's caught me more or less, I don't say every carp that I've ever caught, but yellow's a really good color for me. I've always used it. It's a great color. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna get about now putting some bait out. I'm gonna put my bait out before I actually start fishing. Uh, you know, the evening's drawing in now, so the wind's just, just settling off a little bit. It was a bit stronger earlier. But I'm going to uh, knock up a couple of spob mixes and we'll have a look at exactly what sort of bait that I like to use, you know, for this sort of fishing. And uh, yeah, we'll set about getting the bait out and then we'll flick the rods over the top and uh, get a bit of food on the go, I think. All right, so I've just been out to the van, got a bucket of bait. So basically just, just going to start off with a right healthy load of goodies, really. I've got some 8 mil SLK that's been soaked in some warm water, a bit of case dim liquid. Um, got some 15 mil bug in there as well. Um, I ain't gone mad on the boilies. Probably got like, I don't know, a couple of kilos of eight millers and uh, probably a kilo of 15s. Got some mini crayfish micro mix in there, like micro pellets and some corn. And that's just going to keep pumping loads of food signals. Um, you know, you want to be, you want to keep these fish grubbing around. You want to attract them in your peg all the time. Um, and especially like because they're nomadic carp and they swim up and down in big shoals and that, you wanna you want your baited area working all the time. So if you know if nothing's actually feeding on your baited area, if they too do come by you, you, you want your baited area to be just constantly puffing off you know attractions to draw them straight onto your spot if they do come by. Um, and yeah, that's it. Just a just a really healthy bucket of food for them for this time of year. It's perfect. So I'm going to go about on this spot. I'm going to do my short spot first for the one rod. Probably going to put 15 big spawns um, just to kick that off. And I might do like, I don't know, might put a bit more in out of there. Probably do like 30 big ones um, out on the main spot and just go from there. There's plenty enough to get a bite off of both spots. And yeah, so, right, let's get this out. first like bite for this place it was looking uh, looking not, not gr sort of not bleak but you know it was definitely looking quite uh, quite quiet in the afternoon but we got the rods out all sorted got the bait out there nice and uh, yeah now we're into a fish which is just what we want Nice to get the first one in the bag. Took longer than I anticipated. I thought, you know, we had caught one yesterday, but um, so be it. We got one. 
Yeah, lovely. Pop the mat up, we'll get her out and have a quick look. quite old this fish but yeah he's I don't know close to 20 pound not gonna bother weighing him but yeah nice start um, caught off the main spot out the front uh, seen seen a couple of other fish there as well seen one show right over the bait and a couple like a little way beyond it so there's definitely definitely one or two in the area now but yeah what a lovely fish lovely horseshoe carp that's the beauty about this place you know you can catch some young ones you can catch some old ones but yeah, it's, uh, every fish is a different fish, but you know, good fishing nonetheless. Yeah, nice to get one off the bait. Um, seen one show right over the bait as well, and one little way beyond. So there's definitely a couple of fish about. So what we'll do is we'll pop this one back, get that rod back out on the spot, maybe get another chance. But yeah, lovely fish. another one was looking pretty good for a bite oh there he is on the top the old lead's come off obviously he's up in the water now yeah so yeah I've seen one show clum over the bait seen a couple around it so it was looking you know was looking on for a bite to be fair and uh, yeah just literally got the rod back out, put the kettle on. See one show, we set the camera up just to see if we could get one showing over the bait. And uh, the, the old left hand rod on the spot was away. This is, I caught the, you know, I caught the previous fish on the right hand one on the, of the two on the spot. And I was thinking about redoing this, but then I thought, well, no, it's on the spot. It's, you know, it's good to go. So I left it. And uh, and yeah, true to form, she was all right. Henry. Actually done. We should sit there for a minute, can't we? Just unhooked him in the in the net there, nice and easy. Just gonna uh, flick this rod out. And we'll get him out. Have a look. Lovely looking linear. Yeah, very nice fish. So Where is he? 
number two. Yeah, perfect. Well, we just set the uh, set the camera up, looking over the baited area, just because we see a couple showing in the area. Hey, up, we're away. Just had to uh, pop that fish back in the retainer quickly there. He was just about to show you him, and uh, the rod's gone. Yeah, same rod actually. Nice, nice third bite in probably 40 minutes, half an hour. Nice, what I'm gonna probably do, looking at it now, is that I've not caught anything on my left hand rod. Um, I know, I've not seen anything around here and the bloke over that way he hasn't caught anything either. So like the importance of obviously what I was saying about plumbing your spot up properly at the start is that I know that the spot out there is actually good for free rods. So what I'm gonna probably do is see if we can get this one in. And then what I'll do is get that left hander in, I think. Um, shimmy that right hander across a little bit and then put these two rods back out on the spot. So I'll be fishing all three on the spot then. Um, and yeah, that's the importance of knowing you know, knowing your spot, knowing that you can get three rods on it, or two rods or one rod, or just knowing how big it is. And, uh, yeah. So definitely, you know, it's still early days. We've had a little, little flurry of bites. I've not topped up with any bait yet, and the reason why I've done that, is I put a bit of bait in, a bit of bait in last night. You know, I said that I put a little bit more than I wanted to in, just because I was getting absolutely mullered by the birds. And I don't want to, I didn't want to encourage, two seconds, just got a little bit knitting. Yeah, I didn't want to encourage the bird life back onto my spot at first thing this morning. I wanted to keep it, keep it nice and quiet. And uh, yeah, and like normally I would top up, but they would, you know, we were absolutely smashed by birds surface fishing yesterday and I got smashed by birds when I was when I was spotting up last night even I waited till after dark I put a few more spots out and they were still on me going to town and they were obviously obviously I managed to get some bait out there but yeah I've not topped up this morning and they've left me alone a little bit He's in. Right then. He can stay in the net for a second. We'll uh, pop this one back out of the sling and then we'll get this one over in, in the net. I'll have a look at him and then we'll set about getting all three rods back out on the spot and maybe put a little bit of bait out. Well, here's the one that, this is the second fish. Um, we were just trying to do a few steals of this. Um, yeah, and got that other bite really quickly. So I quickly zipped him up, popped him back in the edge, played that fish in. Yeah, see so here he is. Lovely looking linear. Perfect, you know. Again, just on that PB pop up on the bait. But yeah, what we'll do, we've treated this one, had a lifted scale, so we've treated this one up. Um, done the hook hold in the mouth as well. Make sure we look after them. But we'll slip this one back, we'll get that other one sorted out quickly in that landing net. And then we'll get all three rods back out on the spot. You know, get that left hander in off that left hand spot. And then all three rods out on the main spot. Seems there seems to be a few fish about. Happy days. There you go. Third one off that front spot this morning. Perfect, nice little start. Yeah, good times. But yeah, as you can tell, they've, you know, they've had a good spawn a few weeks ago. And uh, obviously they're fairly hungry and we're getting amongst a few now. But yeah, we'll pop this one back. 
have a bit of a sort out. Got a rod everywhere, got a rod over the, in the tree over there, got a rod here, put my net back together. Have a bit of regroup, maybe have a look at, maybe putting a bit of bait out. I've laid off with putting, putting any bait out this morning just because I didn't want to encourage the birds too much. And uh, yeah, it's definitely paid off, you know, three quick bites. I think if I'd have had a pack of birds on me, like yesterday when I was putting that bait out, they, you know, they were going to town on me. There was probably, I don't know, 50, 60 birds having a go. So um, just laying off with a spot, I think it's definitely helped. And, you know, we've got a few quick bites. So yeah, nice, let's get her back. Right, so we were literally just saying how we were going to put these rods back out fresh baits out on that spot there however just as i was saying that a fish has just nutted out right over the top of that short spot round to the left um and yeah the, the bloke opposite did catch one about an hour ago but i was just literally saying to lee like, i'll you know I've not seen nothing to the left and then a fish has just popped his head out plumb over the bait so this rod um this rod here has got a line marker on for that spot so i'm going to wind this in and then there's me other marker there i put two markers on this rod i put one one for that short spot and one for that longer spot so yeah, we'll get this rod in. I'm gonna flick it back round to the left. I'm not gonna put any bait over there, but I'm gonna flick it back round to the left and just see. I'll give it, give it an hour if a fish has showed there. Got nothing to lose. There's clearly one near there. So yeah, let's give it a go. Beautiful. that fish showed out to the left. Literally, as we were going to put the rods back out on the main spot earlier, um, just saying how nothing had showed round to the left. And I actually see one stick his head out right over the bait. So rather than put three out there, I just put the two back out on the main spot and zipped, zipped this one back on that little short spot out there. And uh, yeah, got a bite. Before he come off then. As soon as that weed goes over their eyes, they don't really kick much. But uh, yeah, just netted the ball of weed. I can see the tail sticking out the back. Yeah, he's a lovely looking fish. Look at him. about that nice 20 plus linear different spot you know that short spot round to the left where I see that fish um, different rig different bait perfect yeah so you know 
a great way to fish lakes like this. Two different approaches. Yeah, definitely work. Um, however, I said I was coming here for 48 hours um, and we've caught a few and you know, it's nice to have caught them and there's plenty of fish in here to catch some really nice ones as well. But I've also got a ticket on a lake just down the road, which is part of the Carp Society um, farriers. Some massive, massive commons in there. I'd love to get my hands on one of them. So I'm going to pop this one back and head over there and see if I can get myself a really, really nice fish. There's like 20 odd 40 pounders in there. So uh, yeah, and it's, you know, it's been doing a few fish. So you've got to be in it to win it. Let's get over there and have a go, see if we can get ourselves a chunk. See you later, mate. Right, let's get this kit away and head over there, see if we can get ourselves a little hippo. Come on. Got the rods ready. Uh, it's like a nice hole in the weed, not too far out. It's only 14 rod lengths. And yeah, everything else is weed. As you can see, the clear areas that you want to fish, you just got to literally drop a lead in it, feel that it's uh, actually presentable. And there's not like loads of low lying, you know, stalky weed. Um, and yeah, it's really clear. So I've still got my same rigs on for horseshoe for now. I don't want to be messing about. Um, I'm just going to literally plop these two rods out and just drop a couple of spots over the top in that hole in the weed whilst there's a few, you know, they're a little way off the spot, just down in the weed, but just want it out there, literally. So if one comes across that spot, it can just drop down, no drama, and uh, see if we can nick a bite. Um, you know, I'm only looking to catch a fish at the moment. So yeah, we're gonna uh, plop these rods out, and then I'm just gonna literally, yeah, drop a couple of spots over the top, and that's it, we'll be fishing. Um, we can kick back, sit in the chair and, uh, Chill out if one comes in close enough, maybe try and nick one off the top. Well, the evening's drawing in now, and um, yeah, we've had a bit of food, cranked the old, uh, cranked the cob on, a nice steak, and a bit of a uh, bit of veg. And that but yeah we got the um got the rods back out refresh the spot just going to sit back now there's not more a lot more that i can actually do you know the fish are about there's the odd fish about in the weed um just got to swipe one comes across drops down on the spot and we get a chance um yeah so gonna stick the kettle on just watch the uh watch the evening come in As the Moz would say in true style, buzzing. He says it with a bit more room. I'll say, wait. Just lost it. Just swam off in the weed. Yes, lost it. Ah, <laughs> uh, you couldn't write a book on it, could you? I could probably walk out and pick it up. It's just sat there in the weed. Well, we had a chance, blew it. So, well, it's, it's still a chance, got a few more hours, you know. So, so we'll flick this rod back out. I've just chucked the other rod back out. Um, 
So I did chuck two on, two on that little clearing in the weed, just because it was big enough. Um, but rather than try and drag the fish back through the weed without a line in the water, I just whip that rod in first. And uh, yeah, so start again. Yes. Well, you see me lose that fish earlier and I literally thought that was it. I flipped the rods back out, a couple of spots over the top. And like, like I was saying earlier, when you get... I thought I lost that one then. Jesus, it's no good for me. So, yeah. When you get it right, in the right place, the right bait, you get an opportunity. And we've been lucky. We'll be lucky to get a second one, because I've got to be off soon. It don't look massive, but it's a fish. Come on, baby. Yay! Cheers, Melv! <laughs> <laughs> Well, what a turn out for the books, you know. Nipped down to Orshu, got a few bites, and then, yeah, not that there's not fish in Orshu this big, but um, there's a lot more of them in here, that's a fact, and, it, you know, it's my syndicate water, they want to keep trying to fish. Um, and, yeah, so, what a lovely time. There you go. A lovely 26 and a half pound, but, yeah. Made up with this one, you know, lost that fish earlier. I was pretty gutted, I thought that was our chance gone. Um, got the rods back out and managed another bite. So yeah, you know, when the rigs and the baits come good, these aren't that far away really. Obviously you've seen that over two lakes. We've caught fish from both of them. Gonna get this one back to a watery home. There you go, off she goes. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and taking something from it to put into your own fishing. Yeah, but more importantly, just make sure you enjoy it. Come on, girl. <laughs>